G'day, mate, and welcome to what will be the last episode of Dyson Sphere with me, Jenny. And of course, we have the hardworking, overachieving Mr. Icarus with us today. And as I said, this will be the last episode, episode number 74 of what, my second, third, fourth, fourth playthrough, fifth playthrough of Dyson Sphere. Um, we're starting off, well, we're, we're continuing our, our tour from last episode into this episode on our black box system, our, our black box planets, our black box system, because, well, when blueprints were, were finalized, finalized, uh, up and running and definitely had most of the bugs removed from, from the feature list the feature list um we came out we made a brand new system called black box and on black box we started making what i dubbed black box builds so black box builds are for, for, for to make things as simple as possible uh they are designed to output a a end material from preferably as raw a material as possible or from existing blueprints that we've made. So we're gonna start here at, at any matter fuel rods. Any matter fuel rods. Super super late game. Actually, the last black box build we did, uh, and of course, any matter fuel rods require any matter. They require hydrogen. They require uh, the annihilation constraint spheres, and they require titanium alloy. And as you can see with this particular build, this particular build does five anti matter fuel rods per second, which is for my particular planet or my particular system going through 60 science per second and uh, an awful lot of planets, an awful lot of planets and an awful lot of power being used by ships running through or running everywhere at warp speed, uh, we're only using uh, number two uh, for the entire star cluster. We're making 30 per minute on this planet alone. And we're, well, we're, we're making five per minute on this, but five per second, five per second on this planet alone. And we're only using about seven and a half per second for everything, everything, everything. So, um, this particular build, this particular build, uh, makes any matter fuel rods. It does so by importing titanium alloy, which is like as, as not quite super raw. It's not actually bringing in like the titanium and the iron and the sulfuric acid and processing it all together as part of the build, but it is a single smelted item. So it's been, and it's been smelted once and then being imported directly to here. Also uh, brings in constraint spheres. Constraint spheres come from, well, it's all contained in the same build. Also brings in both the antimatter and uh, the hydrogen from critical photons. So if we look at our next tower, our next tower is bringing in the critical photons, which we just covered. Also uh, bring in both the particle containers and the processors to make the annihilation constraints for Now, you might say to, say to me, Jenny, you said a black box build is self-contained. Well, we'd already made a blueprint for both the particle containers and for the processors. So I didn't see the point in doubling up our double ups to double up our double ups. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, obviously our anti matter fuel rod build. Uh, prior to that, we'd done uh, small carrier rockets. Small carrier rockets have two different imports, the, uh, the, the deuterium fuel rods plus the quantum chips. And again, have a self-contained build of Dyson Sphere components. Because Dyson Sphere components, if we just look at them in the production list, they only go into small carrier rockets. So there's no point to put them in the network. Uh, and that brings us up to deuterium fuel rods. Deuterium fuel rods only require, well, titanium alloy and the stupid blue motors. The stupid blue motors, which we have a blueprint for. Titanium alloy obviously comes from smelting planet and deuterium. Well, we have a blueprint that also converts a whole lot of hydrogen into a whole lot of deuterium. So again, we have a small blueprint that does uh, does deuterium fuel rods. If you're curious about any of these particular blueprints, they're all available on my Discord server. I have shared every single one of these blueprints uh, with you guys so if you want a copy of any of these blueprints you can jump on my discord server check them out either use them yourself use them as inspiration yourself to you know make your own build maybe you'll go that one step further and you will bring in raw iron uh, raw iron raw titanium and raw acid make the titanium alloy that require on site to also bring in iron and copper and magnets and graphene to make the normal motors, to make the green motors, to make the blue motors, to also bring in the deuterium, to, to, to do deuterium fuel rods from raw materials. Like, like, that would be the next evolution of these blueprints. 
but that's probably a little bit too in depth for even my taste. Uh, next up, we have uh, sails. Sails, of course, require uh, graphene and they also require hydrogen, which should be on a local out. Uh, these obviously come from us bringing in fire ice to make the uh, graphene on site. We get rid of the hydrogen because it's a waste product. And over here, it re also requires for a sale, it requires photon combiners. Photon combiners have two recipes. They have a basic recipe and advanced recipe. This is another build I'm really, really proud of because we're actually using the advanced recipe from uh, optical grading crystal and also have the basic recipe from prisms from glass as a backup so the idea is the advanced recipe comes through here and only if there's a gap in the belt does the basic recipe kick in uh, but again same story we are bringing in glass to make the prisms also bringing in the optical grading crystal for the advanced recipe also bringing in the iron the copper directly as a raw resource and making the circuit boards on site to feed both of these builds. So again, I, I, I really like these black box builds. I put a lot of time and effort into them. I've also gone insane on marking some of the builds as the as the memo memo icon got added we, we started using that extensively uh, up here we have obviously uh frame material frame material is a very very basic uh, a basic item when you boil it down it brings in two raw materials uh, being high purity silicon and also titanium alloy also carbon nanotubes which i gotta admit are a little bit of a pain to make but if we come over here to one of these particular black box builds which brings in fire ice to give us graphene on site also brings in hydrogen or also outputs the hydrogen into a tower as a waste item with a significant buffer you know don't want any blockages in the system uh and then brings in titanium and takes the graphene we've already made here in a closed loop we can then output uh 30 carbon nanotubes per second which then means a build like this becomes super easy to put down uh speaking of other builds that become super super easy is you know green science that nightmare that everybody hates well we also have a build here that does 15 green science per second which brings in quantum chips and also brings in graviton lenses the green science itself the build's not too bad it's actually the two items that are required to make green science that make it a bit of a nightmare also because we're making green science here we're definitely making sure that we prioritize turn the green science into warpers first which we're putting in this tower and making them available anywhere in the galaxy before we you know have the green science disappear into actual science and research uh yeah quantum chips quantum chips massive pain in the butt uh, turns out once you have a black box build everything becomes dead easy uh we put down uh well we, we get our quantum chips which require processes which we're importing because we have a blueprint for processes uh we have a lovely build here which is making uh the plane filters which are going into the tower so they are available because as of the milky way update plane filters now go into two things originally it was just the quantum chips but they now also go into the plane smelter so they are available for other things uh we the plane filters require titanium glass, which we're obviously making on site, because again, titanium glass only goes in a plane filter, so there's no point putting it in a network and making it available anywhere else. It's only going to this destination. Uh, to also to make plane filters, we need cashmere crystals. We need a lot of well, a lot of cashmere crystals. More importantly, you need a lot of hydrogen. So we have two towers up here feeding hydrogen into the cashmere cashmere crystals with a backup tower to feed in extra hydrogen because uh this particular recipe requires 12 hydrogen to make yep uh, we're making graphene on site we're making titanium crystals on site again we're bringing in as raw material as possible making everything on site in a self-contained build taking out cashmere crystals adding in our titanium glass making our plane filters to make finally at the end the quantum uh, chips this is why black box builds they're just wonderful wonderful um Continuing down our build, we also have uh, uh, Graviton lenses. Graviton lenses require strange matter. They also require diamonds. We're making diamonds on site from Kimberlite, Kimberlite or Kimberlite or. And as for the strange matter, strange matter is coming from a whole bunch of deuterium coming in this tower on the right, on the left, and the other tower on the right. On top of that, we're also bringing in uh, particle containers, which are made well not as part of this build, but also in another planet uh, but that's perfectly fine because the way these are set up they can uh, demand things locally and demand things from other planets obviously bringing in the iron uh, speaking to deuterium 
we have a number of builds over here which are designed to bring in a full belt of hydrogen and convert it into a full belt of deuterium at a rate of just over 30 per second. We have 108 fractionators, which, you know, all have a 1% chance, a 1% chance of every bit of hydrogen passing through them to output into a bit of deuterium. So, consequently, this particular build is producing, you know, 30 deuterium per second. Uh, but those particle containers, oh, 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 before we look at particle containers, the other beautiful thing, and this is why we're doing a, a worldwide base tour, is we have down here a, a hub a hub where we can start importing new materials these are designed for outposting and setting up new planets so the idea of these is they're going to import all the things that you may need on any planet along with getting some power up and running so in a center tower we're bringing in like belts and sorters and assembly machines and towers and and miners all the basic things that you may need um the one the two things you're guaranteed to need on any planet or three are going to be belts uh tesla towers and of course mining machines on top of that on the right hand side we have uh logistics towers uh, logistics vessels and of course uh, some logistics drones because no matter what any planet you go to you're probably going to want to tap the eye of the 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 the, the ore patches that are there hence it automatically brings in miners for you, power poles for you, belts for you. Also brings in uh, some logistic vessels, so you can put them in the, the towers on that planet to ship the resources out. Um, the other thing it brings in, in this particular case, is it brings out hydrogen. And hydrogen is going to run into thermal power plants to make power, because you're going to need power to run whatever you happen to be running. Also brings in some warpers just in case well let's be honest you're probably going to want to start warping things around sooner or later also brings in foundation because i'm yet to find a planet i don't need at least some foundation on and this is our first iteration this is our first iteration with our first fuel type being well hydrogen hydrogen and not even a hydrogen fuel rod just pure hydrogen because hydrogen is one of the most abundant uh, resources in the galaxy from there we step up to the next version the next version actually runs on miniature fusion reactors and miniature fusion power plants miniature fusion whatever they are and deuterium fuel rods this is our second iteration uh the tower on the right is still the same tower on the left the only difference is is we've got deuterium fuel rods uh it's still using solar panels as you can see filling up some of the uh empty spaces along with bringing in some uh, uh, along with using um, wind turbines, wind turbines to make sure all the towers have power. In fact, if we just quickly look at this, you can see this tower gets a white circle on it when I hover my mouse over the wind turbine. I could use power poles as I have with the one in the middle. Uh, you see that it's powered from that pole, that pole, that pole, or the back pole. But I chose to use wind turbines. At least then you have hopefully enough power being made via wind turbines and solar panels that if there's ever an interruption to supply of like deuterium fuel rods that it has enough power to kick start it back up to make sure you have that minimum 10 percent power required to get a sorter up and running so these are two iterations uh the the, the any matter suns around the outside is well i just needed more power on this planet to be honest uh but we have a third rendition third rendition out on black box number three which has the rest of my blueprints, which we're going to cover really quickly. Um, come on, accelerate Icarus. Accelerate in height. There we go. And head over to black box number three. Our third rendition, ooh, after everything loads, is at the other pole. Yes. Okay. Uh, it is the exact same thing again, but this time features just any amount of fuel rods to finish uh, feed the miniature suns. You know, for that ultimate, uh, I need power situation. Also, that ultimate late game where power becomes a much less of a much less of a thing that you have to struggle for. Let's put it that way. Okay, so on this particular planet, uh, this particular planet is we'll, we'll finish here. We'll start here. We'll turn on our lovely lights. Come on, there we go. Uh, we have miniature miniature particle containers. Particle particle containers. Particle containers. Okay, uh, same story. We are importing all the direct uh, all the raw items. So we're bringing in the green engines, which I know everybody loves building. Uh, also bringing in copper, and as you can see, we're making the graphene on site. Uh, speaking of green motors, because they are everybody's favorite item, no, they're blue motors. Green motors, green motors are right here. We have a blueprint that does green motors at 30 green motors per second. A full belt's worth 
which require 60 engines per second. As you can see, I have a self-contained build right here doing engines, which obviously engines require both gears and also magnetic coils and iron. We're bringing the iron to make the engines. We're bringing the iron to make the gears on site. These are not part uh, hooked into the, 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 the main uh, network of towers at all. We're actually bringing the iron to make the exact amount of gears to fill this build and then finally right here at the end we're bringing in both copper and magnets to make the exact amount of magnetic uh, magnetic coils to feed the engine build uh and then we bring the engines from tower to tower with a short flight short hop to bring uh the engines in to also again bring in uh, magnets and copper to make the magnetic coils to make green engines and if all else fails we can then fly the green engines over here to make uh, the super magnetic rings, i.e. the ones that commonly called the blue engines, because, well, yeah, yeah, uh, everybody hates making blue engines. Uh, you should have warpers, there you go. Okay, so, that should be storage. Excellent, okay, so, uh, continuing through our list of builds, we have, of course, over here, we have a lovely build making, uh, Carbon nanotubes, carbon nanotubes, uh, which have a recipe of um, either bring in straight spinniform, which is an absolute pain because spinniform is actually really hard to find, or you can bring in titanium and also bring in graphene. Now, graphene, after you bring in fire ice, makes a very simple recipe. So we have uh, these three rows here making graphene, which are keeping the graphene inside an enclosed network. This is one of these really important things with these black box builds. They are completely self-contained. So the graphene's coming in here and it is feeding these four builds, four builds, four builds of, oh, four builds of um, carbon nanotubes, also bringing the titanium alloy to fill both these builds. The excess hydrogen, which is a waste product, has a giant storage tower here just to make sure it doesn't back up, but then heads in the tower and then it disappears into wherever hydrogen goes to live. Uh, yes, on top of that, we also have uh, particle broadband, particle broadband to make purple science. Purple science, which we just flew past, which also requires uh, processes. Purple science, again, we have a blueprint. Um, to cover this really, really quickly, we're bringing in, crap, I forgot the rule. Mm, fractal silicon, fractal silicon to make uh, silicon crystals on site to bring in also plastic and the carbon nanotubes we just spoke about to make 30, 30 fra uh, particle broadband per second, which we're putting into this tower, which then makes it available in the network. Plastic, same story, we're bringing in uh, 60 refined oil per second and 60 energy, no 30, 30 energy graphene to make uh, 30 plastic per second in all those chemical plants. Uh, and to do that, of course, we need 60 refined oil per second, which means we have uh, this lovely build here, which brings in two belts worth of oil, uh, being 60 per second, to then give us two belts worth of refined oil, uh, two belts worth of refined oil per second, and also takes hydrogen, and once again, makes hydrogen go to the magic places hydrogen goes, uh, which then leads us up to some of these earlier builds where we were much, much earlier in the game, and we were making processes. Processes, we actually have two different builds here, um, both available in the blueprint system. We have um, this processor build here, which brings in iron and copper directly to make circuit boards, which are one of the items required for processes. Also brings in the same copper and uh, silicon again to make the microcrystalline components, which are the other item required for uh, processes. As you can see, we're doing a direct feed build because this is again a self-contained black box build. This particular build does 12 per second. Was I was happy with it, but I was more happy after I rearranged the whole thing and doubled its size. And this particular one does 24 per second. On top of that, it has a couple of extra machines making processes that after they've th flown up here and through this build and they've been consumed, I don't know, a couple of extra machines making circuit boards that after it's flown up here, th th flowed, there we go, flowed up here and makes processes. Anything excess actually heads into this tower and then is available in the network. Uh, speaking of other things that we want to develop in the network, we have the most boring build over here, which is making uh, 
magnetic coils, magnetic coils. We also have a boring build all the way over here, which we're going to cover really, really quickly. It's doing gears. Basically, it's boring. It brings in iron. It makes gears. They're available on the network. Nine times out of ten, if we've actually... 10 times out of 10, if we've needed gears in a build, we've made the gears on site. But we do have a couple of little builds like this to feed things like the hub, which we're going to get to in one second after we cover yellow science. So yellow science requires uh, titanium crystals, also requires uh, diamonds. Diamonds. So diamonds, again, we're bringing in via uh, Kimberlite ore. I have chosen to use the plane smelters um, because I have the technology available. If you were to use this blueprint and you didn't have plane smelters yet, you just pop it down and just double up the amount of smelters. Put smelters here and another row of six of them on this side of the belt and have the diamond belts, uh, the diamond output belts join together and come down here and make, uh, combine with the titanium crystal, which of course is coming in from raw titanium along with uh, organic crystal and makes 15 yellow science per second. But after making this build, I was happy with it, but not as happy as I could be. So I made an alternate build, which is a little bit shorter, a little bit fatter, but has the exact same output. Um, again, same story. I chose to use plane smelters. Realistically, you could probably, well, realistically, if you don't have them, you have to add a second round of smelters. But that's entirely, you know, up to you. That's a quick and easy fix to do. Which brings us to the last two builds I really want to cover, which is uh, Red Science. Red Science is pretty boring. It is bringing in energy and graphene and also bringing in hydrogen. Um, these are both raw materials, so it's literally just whack them together, put them in the tower, ignore the clipping. I would, I should fix the clipping. The clipping definitely bothers me. It's, it's definitely an afterthought, but it's definitely also something I'm not going to fix at this stage. If it bothers you, please move those labs to the end uh, of the line. And at the same time, we have Blue Science. Blue Science, again, requires... Uh, circuit boards so we're bringing in copper and iron to make circuit boards also requires magnetic coils we're bringing magnets and we're already bringing in copper to make magnetic coils on site to then have this tiny itty build build here that does 15 uh 15 blue science per second which brings us to my my last build my final build well almost final build uh this is my lovely hub now i have promised i have already made this particular build available in my discord as a very very early alpha version because when blueprints were first implemented, the very first thing I did was make sure that as I've built this blueprint, or as I've built this build time and time again, as I've improved it, as I've changed it, as I've refined it, I did promise as soon as blueprints were available, I'd make it available, which I did. The catch was uh, the blueprint system when it was first implemented had a few hiccups. Let's go with hiccups. Hiccups and features. Um, first one being that really, really broke this blueprint. Well, caused issues. Is when you first put it down, the warper belts wouldn't have warpers on them, so you'd have to go through and set all those manually. At uh, the same time, anything where you had two belts meeting in a T-junction, like this, was also broken. There's been some other few minor things that have happened with this particular thing this is why it hasn't been published as a proper blueprint yet uh i also found out in attempting to improve this from this is say revision number five four um whilst trying to turn this from revision four into revision six and make it publicly available i intentionally put this blueprint on the equator which seems like a good spot to put it except this tower this tower this tower and this tower if you move it up 10 tiles, suddenly the tower is too close to one another and you can't build it. Uh, same sort of applies if you move it down 10 tiles, this tower and this tower are too close to one another, so you can't build it either. Uh, things to be fixed in revision number 8 of the blueprint. Uh, but yes, this is my uh, lovely uh, construction hub. Construction hub that brings, uh, brings in raw materials. Um, so, well, raw materials. So, some basic materials. Actually, just brings in materials. In fact, as we work through this, it gets to some pretty advanced stuff later on. Uh, but yes, this makes everything you can imagine and also makes sure that they're available in the towers to be requested out. Now, I'm going to cover really, really quickly why the requests are set the way they are. You can set your request differently, but I'm making this blueprint available as you see it right here. So if you want to change things, it's going to be up to you to change them. Don't come back in the comment section and yell at me because it's provided as is. If you want a, a better version, you're going to have to wait for revision 9 or 10 where I get around to fixing a few things. Also, where I cut down the blueprint of the... 
I, I further refined the blueprint in revision number 14, I figure, um, where I make it more modulus, because at the moment it's over 3,000 items, which means you can't place it down until you have purple signs anyway, which sort of defeats some of the purpose of the blueprint of getting it down early game. Anyway, um, as I was saying, so I have set all those requests to a minimum of 100, okay? Because when you fully, when you get all the research done for a logistics vessel, they have a maximum cargo capacity of a, a thousand items but it, because they're set to a minimum load of 10 percent, they will leave if they have at least 100 items they can pick up now if you send a ship out to pick up say smelters and you request only 100 at the other end okay uh your ship leaves from where whatever planet you are on where you're trying to get smelters to uh flies to here to pick up at least 100 because you know it's set to a minimum load of 10 percent, and you only want 10 percent at the other end you only want 100 the catch is when it gets here it says hey boss i'm here for arc reactors i'd like at least 10 percent. i'd like at least 100 and then this tower goes oh good news i have a thousand for you and the captain uh, captain of the logistics vessel goes, well, I can fit a thousand, so I'm going to take a thousand. And loads up a thousand and flies it out to you when you only want a hundred. So, things are capped to at least a hundred, because a hundred is sort of the minimum you can bring. You can set it down to one percent for different towers. But if you set it to one percent and you request a thousand of something... It does mean every single time there's 10 in a tower, a ship may leave, costing a warper and power to fly it to you. You've been warned. Uh, this is why I've set them to 10%. At least then it's carrying 100 at a time. I don't feel nearly as bad. But it does mean that, yes, you have to have every request at at least 100. When it comes to a certain, a certain number of things like storage boxes, I don't really want 100. I probably will want 50. Um, when it comes to miners, 100 seems perfectly reasonable. Arc reactors, a thousand seems reasonable thermal power plants probably 50 would be reasonable but like i said they're set to 100 for a reason um so in here these these produce just about everything you can think of now there's a couple of things i will mention with this blueprint um as you can see there's boxes on boxes so first box is obviously output of output of the machine we wax into a box saves it in a box that way we have a buffer so when a ship comes over here and picks up a thousand Rather than having to wait for this poor one assembler to make another thousand, it already has a significant amount they can just, you know, output onto the belt and shove it into the tower. On top of that, there is this lovely box here. And this box is designed if you have extra materials you want to get rid of. Uh, I really have no arc reactors. Ah, I have miners. Okay. Uh, as you can see, this box is full. I wouldn't have anywhere to put the miners, but I have a box up here that is capped that I can obviously throw extra miners in. And this is why it has these extra storage boxes on top. So if you wish to empty out your inventory, rather than throwing it on the ground and then pressing the delete button, you can come into these boxes and top them up with things that you may want to put back. Uh, anywhere there's a uh, a red bl blocked out box, you can definitely put something in. Uh, sorters can't access that to insert items in, but they can definitely access them to bring the items back out. Uh, same with the way this is stacked. It means that when an item disappears from this bottom slot, the, uh, items, the items in the top box will fall into the bottom box to fill up those gaps. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, uh, we are making, as you can see, uh, thermal power plants, storage boxes, uh, smelters, miners, power poles, uh, liquid storage tanks, labs. I will mention labs are not available in the network. We, we have three things, four things that are not available in the network. We're going to cover each one of them at one at a time. We have sorters. Again, sorters go into a tower 100 at a time. Only ever 150. 50 is one stack's worth. Um, actually, no, we can see it right here. I have uh, 77 liquid storage tanks. I don't want 77, but the minimum I can request out is 100. So what generally happens is I pick up 100 and then instantly I delete 50 because I prefer to have the inventory slot rather than having more storage liquid storage tanks I'm probably not going to use. Anyway, uh, assemblers, mark 1, 2, 3. Uh, belts one two and three and sorters one two three again you can see we have these extra boxes up here because they have one bit of yellow belt which i have no idea where it came from and i can dump in that tower on top of that i will mention that there is this magic tower here this magic tower is designed for you to get rid of materials if you go out well when you start going out and you start visiting other planets you're going to start off probably going to your very first uh off-site world with yellow belt 
you're probably going to head back out there in another station, upgrade that to Greenbelt, and possibly, even if the miners still exist, they're still mining hard at work much later, you're probably going to upgrade that to Blue Belt. Same is going to happen with Sorters. Um, I haven't had spot uh, put a spot for assembly machines. I think you can fly them back manually. But if you put down a tower out there in the wilderness... Uh, can I put a tower? Everywhere is going to be too close. Eh, I can put a tower there. If you put a tower out in the wilderness and you put in some belt and you slide this you set it to one percent you slide this all the way down it means that either a ship from here will fly out with uh the yellow belt green belt whatever it happens to be uh as long as it's set to supply uh rather than uh, rather than request as long as it's set to supply uh it, the ship from that end or a ship from this end will fly out and pick up your yellow belt, your green belt, your, your sorters, whatever. Bring it back here and recycle it for you. And bring them out these belts and put them into these boxes and upcycle them to the next version. It is a feature I've added maybe with the cost of a warper. It's probably be, be better off to just delete them. But again, entirely up to you guys. Uh, on top of that, we have, well... Uh, we have engines. Engines are made on site for the one reason of they're needed in the Sword, Sword of Mark II. We're also making, obviously, wind turbines. Uh, the two different engine types for the two different types of ships. Both little shippies and big shippies. Uh, going back to our towards our left, we have fractionators. Uh, obviously, chemical plants. The wireless power towers, which honestly... After playing through the game once again, I've decided something that I only really want up until the point of... Probably I have warpers up and running. Once I have warpers up and running, uh, I, I I don't need wireless power towers. In fact, whatever power while whatever wireless power towers I've put into this particular uh, station, I've never requested offsite. So again, when it comes to revision number eighteen of this blueprint, you'll probably find that this no longer goes to a tower. Anyway, on to uh, the list of oil extractors, oil refineries. Obviously, the two buildings making plasma exciters to you know, make sure they're available for those particular buildings that need them. Uh, over here we have uh, the planetary planetary logistics station, the interplanetary lo logistics station, of course, with the orbital collector. Uh, we have substations. Substations is another thing that doesn't actually go into a tower, which probably is a good reason to get rid of these and put those in there instead, because at least substations are actually worthwhile. Uh, and of course, we're making on-site, we're making accumulators because they're needed in the uh, orbital collectors. Now, as for things that are not made here, not made or are made here and not available in the network we of course have accumulators we of course have substations we of course have uh the labs which i've mentioned already and um the fractionators so there's also a lot of end game items that you don't see here obviously no mini particle colliders no ray receivers no mini fusion power plants no rail ejectors no vertical launching sellers and no artificial stars technically no solar panels uh but that brings us to the second half of the hub the polar hub which is right behind us on the north south pole one of the two poles and over here you'll find all those items so as i said labs labs are right there uh over here we have um the miniature particle collider these are all set up with requests to bring in the materials uh yes bring in the materials uh to then make whatever item happens to be to put them back in the tower with at least 100 and a buffer box of some description i've always set these to what i think is a reasonable amount you might disagree with me but i it's what i think is a reasonable amount uh you know for miniature bar colliders you don't use them that fast 20 seems heaps uh over here we have they're not available in the network there you go. Uh, over here we have uh, we have ray receivers. Um, obviously, it's missing photo components in the network. Something that you know, if you happen to use my blueprints, you have to make sure you put them in the network somewhere. Uh, they only go literally. That is the only building they end up in photon combiner right there. Uh, it's the only building they end up in. Mainly, they end up in solar cells. Um, in fact, I think no solar cells are on the other planet. Yes. 
Yeah, I think there's room in that tower to add them. Anyway, uh, on to EM rail ejectors, on to uh, rocket silos, on to uh, artificial stars, on to solar panels. I didn't mention solar panels, didn't I? Again, we're, we're just making the electronic circuits on uh, circuit boards on site, making the solar panels on site. I don't have solar panels in the main build because honestly, I'm not a fan. They use a lot of resources. They don't produce a lot of power and they only produce the power when it's daytime. Whereas wind turbines way cheaper and wind turbines, I can do this and I can, well, helps if I let go of the right, right spot. I can do this and spread the power poles around the planet. Uh, on to miniature fusion power reactors. What are they called? Miniature fusion power plants. Uh, on to this one, which actually brings in uh, antimatter fuel rods to feed our artificial stars, which we'll get to in a minute. Basically, it's bonus power. Also, you might notice that the hub, uh, hub, 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 hub has a red ring around it. The red ring is so you can see it from space, so you know where to aim if you're looking to pick up items or drop items up here we have a blue ring instead so you know where it is to drop off items or pick up items or it gives you a target hit basically also this uh, tower brings in the warpers which as you can see uh, float into this tower out to that tower out to the next tower and daisy change their way, chain their way around the planet uh, next up we have the fractionaires which we covered you know don't exist uh, finally we have uh, water pump Water pumps, uh, which again, we're just making all the raw ingredients or all the uh, prerequisites on site. Honestly, on your home planet, if you craft 50 of these, you're done for a very, very long time. When you start going off and you start grabbing planets and planets worth of sulfuric acid and water, having them automated and having them being able to request them in to it via a tower makes the world of a difference. Uh, we have, of course, uh, the plane filters with one hell of a buffer and 200, 200 in the tower, ready to go. Uh, we have labs again, because we've gone all the way around. And then in the middle of this planet, uh, of this this uh, build, I need to set that up, and I need to set that up, please. Cool. Uh, in the middle of this build, we have, well, the labs. So we have early game, somewhere to land and recharge. So once you get up and you've just started getting, you know, life and, and and your base together, you can stop here at the North Pole and charge very, very quickly. By basically just hitting anywhere in this area, you're going to get hit by at least a couple of towers and recharge Icarus very, very quickly. Uh, as for science, we can see we have our three sciences coming out this tower, which is being fed around a loop. Uh, on the other side, we have uh, the other two sciences plus antimatter also being fed around a loop. And if we just cancel that really quickly, you, these are originally set to research, so you can do your research at the North Pole, but as you progress, as you move on to the White Science, you can have these guys do White Science. They're gonna pop the White Science out onto this lovely conjoined belt, which is gonna head around and head into these giant stack of towers, which will then allow you to actually do research. So, with all that said, that is the end of our tour. That is the end of this playthrough. It has been a brilliant uh, 74 episodes long. We've done massive things. We've done amazing things. I have sunk another 120 hours plus into this game. It's been a blast. It's been a pile of fun. I do need to thank every single uh, YouTube member who has joined, who has gone out of the way to support the channel and get their name on a planet. Uh, I do want to mention, because it was requested, uh, I have made all the different sciences and all the different builds at 15 science per second. But one thing I didn't do was I didn't make a lab build for 15 white science per second that is now available on my discord with all the other blueprints and it also means that it's finally time to complete the mission uh which considering we're doing 60 science per second it only gives me about 60 seconds to talk so uh i want to thank you guys all for watching i want to thank you guys for coming in from the start of the run, start of the run to the end of the run especially if you've watched all 70 plus episodes if you haven't clicked the subscribe button you definitely should uh, should of by now uh by all means if you've joined halfway through or towards the end there is a playlist button in the description you click that go back and start watching from the start all the way to the end binge watch the whole thing if you really feel like it and as for dyson sphere 
Dyson Sphere, I do want to come back. I do want to do two more things. Um, I want to obviously play it again when the devs add something. Probably enemies. Um, I think that'll be the next big update to Dyson Sphere. The other thing I'm considering doing, and you should definitely look in the description again for a link to my Twitch, or you can see it on your screen right now, or actually even up the top right hand corner, I want to speed run it again. I've already done one speed run of Dyson Sphere, but I think I want to do another one. And with all that done, Thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed me. Uh, you joined me for a speed run. Um, I think that'll probably happen over on Twitch. Like I said, link down in the description. And yeah, I think we're done. So thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed. Uh, and tell your mum, JD, and Mr. Icarus, who walks into everything. JD and Mr. Icarus say hi. That's it. We're out. Say hi to your mum from me and Mr. Icarus. Thanks for watching. Bye.